Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel like I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone, to another show of Love and Hearts. This is your host, Christy Reeves. And there's a lot going on happening here at Rebel Hearts. Remember to go over to ChristyReeves.com, sign up for our newsletters in order to stay updated about everything that's happening. We're now sending out weekly newsletters so you have actually access to the replays and some insider information. So go on over there and join us. And the show will be on hiatus starting in September for a few weeks. And we'll let you know about the exact dates in a little bit. But um, I'll be going to Germany and teaching some live classes from over there. So again, Christy Reeves has all the information about what's happening. So I hope you join us. And as you know, Rebel Hearts, I love, love Conscious Media. I've been a fan of Conscious Media for so many years. I've been producing my own documentary series and working on some other stuff. So when I meet other conscious media makers like really people are inspiring change are really putting out messages in order to you know wake us up illuminate issues that we have not just you know in parts of the world but but global issues you know asking us to step forward and become the change that we want to see in the world i am so honored and so excited about who's out there and what is happening and a little while ago i was at the digital hollywood media conference actually with our friend tony over here and I went to a panel on the Documentary Filmmaker Day, and there was this amazing woman on the panel named Erica. And I walked over to her, and I said, I need you to come on Rebel Hearts and talk to our audience, talk to you guys about her, her film company, Town, and share what the story is all about and what they're, you know, wanting to, us to become aware of. So before I introduce the whole team is actually here in the studio with me. So before I introduce them to you, we're going to play really quickly the trailer for Company Town so you get a glimpse of what the show is about. And then we'll go into depth and allow a beautiful conversation over here. Run down to the river. It's all around us. Run down to At the end of the street, the we have citizens up there with cancer. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that we have door-to-door -door cancer like we have. Door-to-door -door cancer. It's just injustice. People are getting sick. They're dying. Everything around here is poison. The air, the dirt, the water. If our government doesn't fix this, then I don't know what kind of government they are. Coke Industries is the second largest privately held company in the United States. Coke Industries now brings in about $115 billion in a year. Some of us say we might be afraid of George Bush. What can they do? What they're already doing to us. There's horrible smells where I live. The dump trucks pour out a lot of bad stuff for our bodies. I have been witness to Georgia Pacific spending over four million dollars just to hide the process. How many of our children and family members have to die in order to keep one job? You literally have the same person putting a paycheck in your pocket that's taking that money back out in the form of pain and suffering. And we're trapped in a situation because of the GP plan. We need the Koch brothers to stand up and be responsible to the peoples here in Crossit, Arkansas. We don't want no handout. We want this area clean. Bit enraging about what's happening, what's going on, but also so, so important. And we're going to let you know where you can see it at the end of the show, so please stay tuned. And Rebel Hearts, help me to welcome the team behind this amazing movie. 
They're sitting here around me, and I'm just going to introduce them real quick. On my right is Natalie, and she's the director, writer, and producer of the show. Then I have Erica, who's the co-director, writer, and producer of the show. And right across from me is Edgar, who is the cinematographer, and you edited it and produced it as well. Yeah. So thank you so much, and welcome to Rebel Hearts, everyone. Thanks thank for you having for us. Having so us. much for having us. <laughs> We're so happy to be here. It's so amazing. I actually ran into Natalie at the parking lot. And <laughs> <laughs> I was walking in, doing my Facebook Live. I'm like, let's just hop on in. We've been having a lot of fun behind the scenes in the green room. <laughs> So we did. We did. <laughs> we did our quick live event. <laughs> back to back. Back to back. Yeah, yeah. we got warmed up for you guys. <laughs> so where I actually want to start is, Natalie, you shared with me, you came across that story about six years ago, right? Yes. So how did you come across that story and why? Why cross it? And what was that inspiration where you said, oh my gosh, I need to make a movie about what's happening in Cross It, Arkansas? Yeah, so so I I came across the people in Cross It um, in 2011, mm -hmm. and I was actually working on another documentary um, called Coke Brothers Exposed, which is directed by Robert Greenwald. Mm -hmm. And so I spent about a year and a half with Cross It all together, getting to know them, and produced a very small segment for Robert's mm -hmm. film, mm -hmm. and. After getting to know them over a period of time, Mr. Bowie, our, our, the pastor and main subject yeah. in our film, and the riverkeeper, Cheryl Slavant, mm -hmm. and meeting the neighbors and the residents in Cross It and knocking on doors with Mr. Bowie and just doing interview after dozens of interviews. And on his street alone, it was just door to door cancer mm -hmm. and <clears throat> unbelievable amount of of suffering and illness. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd never witnessed anything firsthand on that level before. Um, and it was, I was really heartbroken, especially mm -hmm. after becoming close with them. Yeah. And, um, you know, witnessing the pollution in their backyards, mm -hmm. Mr. Bowie, um, showed me where these massive amounts of pollution just yeah. run through their their woods, which their homes are all yeah. nearby. And yeah. then breathing it, I personally felt it. And I'd never experienced that level of mm -hmm. of um, contact with pollution yeah. in general. And yeah. Yeah. so and it's it, like it's you showed in the movie it's just like brown and gory and oh my gosh yeah yeah, yeah. It, and it, I mean it's horrifying mm -hmm. and people's people suffering from rare diseases lots mm -hmm. of cancer on Mr. Yeah. Bowie Street alone 11 out of 15 homes have a cancer death and I was just personally stunned and shocked mm -hmm. and felt um very connected to the people and I wanted to help and make mm -hmm. change and bring awareness mm -hmm. and I wanted to direct a documentary mm -hmm. about it and make a film. And that Eric and I have been dear friends for <laughs> years, years and years, and Edgar. <laughs> and I remember calling Erica and just telling her the situation. And I want to make a film about it and asking her to co-direct a partner. Mm -hmm. And she immediately was all full heart in. Yay! And, <laughs> yeah, and we, and so, and and Edgar, we collaborated and all partnered together mm -hmm, yeah. along with um, our partner, Act4 Entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, our producer, Adam Paul Smith, and our executive mm -hmm. producer, David Johnson from Act4. They were really pivotal, and we all collectively, um, our intention is to bring awareness to the environmental injustice and cross it because yeah. it's emblematic of what's mm -hmm. happening across the country yeah. and we really wanted to humanize the face mm -hmm. of pollution mm -hmm. and show um the ineptitude within the government and the company's responsibility yeah. and really show the nuance of that mm -hmm. which you did so brilliantly and we're going to go a little bit deeper into that rebel hearts in a moment so Erica, when you got that call from Natalie, oh. what was it that made you go like, yes, yeah. I'm totally in. What was your inspiration? Well, um, I was living in New York at the time, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, living in a city and 
not feeling inspired and I was feeling like my soul was being taken away from me um, with a job that I was working at at the time. And I was just looking for something that would empower me and that would excite me and that would help people because that's where my heart really lies is helping people and through the storytelling and through making, you know, films. and, And that was that's always been my goal and my mission. And so When Natalie called me, I knew she'd been working on this film, and she discovered the town. She found Mr. Bowie. She found Cheryl. She was so connected to them and just asked me to be part of it. And without hesitation, I mean, there was, I was just feeling like this is what I needed. And it was, I felt like when we spoke, it was, there was no other, you know, answer but yes. Mm -hmm. And so Edgar, my (laughs) brother. (laughs) It's a family affair. Yeah. yeah, we're all very close. We've known um, we've known each other for so long. They've known each other for so long. Right. And we've all worked together. Yeah, yeah we've, we've all worked, all worked together. in the past as well. Produced mm-hmm. other projects yeah. together, documentaries. Yeah, and so it just really made sense mm-hmm. um, for us to sort of come together. And we started with a, a campaign mm-hmm. um, and raised some money and got some media coverage, and it sort of went from there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you edited and you shot and. We weren't able to get that until we, until we were out there and being able to like yeah. get the footage out and a trailer actually put together is what really helped us gain these partnerships with Act 4 Amazing. and to move forward. Yeah. Amazing. And Edgar, what was it for you about the project where you're like, hey, I'm in, girls? Right. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Um, obviously, uh, working with these two ladies is uh, you know very special and very unique. But for me, um, always been a filmmaker, always been a shooter, editor, and all that. But I came to kind of a, you know, I guess a moment where I was, I was looking for something a little bit more than just, mm-hmm. you know, putting something out there that entertains others. And I was looking to actually couple the entertainment factor with also something that can actually have some sort of, you know, sh- social change or to mm-hmm. be able to affect something in a positive way. So when Natalie and Erica, uh, or we all talked about it, I knew that this was, you know, the perfect opportunity mm-hmm. for me to be able to, you know, mm-hmm. devote my time and energy to something that was actually going to yeah. be a positive yeah. thing. So. That's am- and I can- I so resonate with that because I was acting before I went into f- film production, and I was getting these jobs where I felt like I'm going to McDonald's eating fast food. It was like you <laughs> right. know, not fulfilling yeah. my soul. Yeah. Yeah. And when you and then doing you know this show or other media that I've been producing, it's like s- so nurturing and so fulfilling yeah. because you right. can also see okay. You know, the change that comes from what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, don't you feel that? Yeah, and meeting the community. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm sure you felt the same way. When I first met them, I just felt so drawn to them. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe that this was happening in America, Mm -hmm. you know. And so it was really hard for us Mm -hmm. uh, coming from California to see the suffering that's been happening in Arkansas and we're within the United States. It's like being in a third world country in some aspects where there's no clean water, you're breathing polluted air, um, people are having seizures you know, his he was getting nosebleeds. Right. Um, and nobody's doing anything about it. I mean, that's, I think, one of the most, you know, shocking things about it is mm-hmm. is that nobody, I mean, as far as anybody who has the power to be able to, you know, governmental agencies or state agencies to do something about it, they were all turning a blind eye. And mm-hmm. as we see in the film, uh, some of these, you know, investigators or these, uh, you know, EPA employees had been there 20 years ago and, we're still in the same situation mm-hmm. here. So that was something that really hit hard was that this is happening, but not only is it happening, but nobody's Do doing nobody's anything about doing it. Anything. How was it for you to come into that community where they've been trying to bring awareness to the situation where people were so deadly ill and to have finally someone come in and say, hey, we're going to make a documentary about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to take this to the public. We're going to create awareness for that. How was it for these people to have you come in and, and create that project? Yeah, well, that's, that was what witnessing that component has been pretty remarkable. I mean, it's also important to remember that this community, mm-hmm. it's a legacy issue. The people that, that the town is about 5,500 people. Mm-hmm. They're, they've worked for the company, Georgia Pacific one of the largest paper mills and chemical plants 
in our country, mm -hmm. owned by the Koch brothers who own mm -hmm. Coke Industries. And they make all of our products, American yeah. products, Dixie Paper Cups, Quilton Angel Northern, Sons. exactly. Mm -hmm. And the people in the town work for the mill, their parents did, their grandparents. Yeah. So they've experienced this legacy pollution issue for over a hundred years. This is wow. not this is not new. This is a legacy issue and that mindset of there's an awakening happening within the town mm -hmm. really was bubbling up as we were filming from the very beginning. Wow. So I think what's happened with this this community is that this consciousness and an awakening mm -hmm. within the town mm -hmm. has happened by outsiders coming in. Wow. And outsiders shining a light on their mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. and literally holding a microphone to them, asking them why they're sick, how long they've wow. lived there, these critical questions, right? And them showing, showing us and also them feeling empowered to have a mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. They uh, imagine decades of experience yeah, yeah. in this. And so many members of the community also for years lived in fear and I, looked yeah. the other way, didn't speak up mm -hmm. because the company would come down on them. The government yeah. wasn't by their side. Yeah. And so I think also witnessing with the intention of this being a social action campaign from the beginning mm -hmm. and them witnessing us outsiders come in hold the microphone, shine the light, more people started jumping on board yeah. and Amazing. more people started Amazing. coming forward. I mean, when I was first there, it was like a dozen people would talk to me and it okay. was, it, it took a lot of time to gain mm -hmm. their trust. When mm -hmm. Erica and Edgar, it was like, remember this unfolding, yeah. we just, we kept digging Amazing. and digging Amazing. and story after story of, yeah. of egregious crimes, yeah. whistleblowing, mm -hmm. workers and illness mm -hmm. was unfolding. Yeah. So it's, that's pretty incredible to see true grassroots like mm -hmm. activism yeah, in that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bowie formed mm -hmm. his organization, mm -hmm. Cross It for Concerned Citizens. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. That uh, happened during the time during we were the filming. filming. I mean, when we yeah. first oh were there, gosh. there was no yeah. grassroots oh organizing. Gosh. So that, so that <laughs> at the organizing, they had this awakening. Like, hey, I, I don't have to live this way. Yeah. I can fight back. I don't have to breathe. Yeah you know, poor air, dirty air and dirty water mm -hmm. that's polluted. Mm -hmm. I can, yeah. I have a voice. Yeah, yeah, this isn't the way of I life. have yeah. a voice. Yeah. And, and this, that was pretty amazing to yeah. witness their activism and awakening. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And it's happening yeah. to this moment right yeah. now. I mean, there, there's so much we can talk about, but this unfolding is just mm -hmm. a ripple effect. Yeah, maybe we can talk about it in a little bit, what's happened since, you know, if you finish shooting the movie. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. talk about it in a moment. And, you know, and what you're saying, that that's what really, really struck me when I was watching it, that fear of speaking up. Yeah. With, the fear, if I speak up, I will lose my yes. job, and how am I going to pay for my family for mm -hmm. the food for all the living expenses that we have and being in a situation where you're like literally a victim of circumstances yeah. where there is like you, there's the feeling there's nothing you can do about it I either have to be quiet and accept what is being done to me or it will have really dire consequences mm -hmm. right. and Absolutely. and and you bringing in that movie how amazing yeah absolutely yeah. and and I think one of the the a really brave, bold example in, in the film is of our whistleblower. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the whistleblower coming forward, truly, I mean, he, he risked his life, his mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. you know, to show us this dumping yeah. that's going on behind the people's mm -hmm. homes and the community. And just, and also the workers, the people mm -hmm. coming forward. Mr. Mm -hmm. Bowie mm -hmm. is so brave. Cheryl Slavant, yeah. the Riverkeeper, is so brave. Simone Smith, the nine-year-old so girl. Brave. I yeah. mean, these, yeah. these these people have stepped forward in a mm -hmm. small town um, to oppose the only employer. Yeah, that's their it's their bread and butter. It's their mm -hmm. paychecks. Yes, it's their your cousins mm -hmm. work there. I mean, mm -hmm. this is ingrained yeah. in their in their community, yeah. and so it truly is an act of bravery um, of what they're doing, which is so inspiring and moving mm -hmm. and really profound. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Yeah, that that happened, and yeah. the game changer with the whistleblower. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. we After were, yeah, for so many years, we were looking for the other side mm -hmm. and you know justification that mm -hmm. this is happening we're hearing stories story after story door to door cancer but we didn't have anyone from the inside yeah. and so when the whistleblower came forward it was a moment where we i remember when we we're filming in his home and we were just like 
cannot believe he is telling us that they are dumping 400 acres of waste into people's backyards onto their own land. They've spent $4 million to hide this problem. They're not cleaning it up. And he took a big risk to come mm-hmm. forward, yeah. not only for his family, but future employment, mm-hmm. you know, and he it had was, to leave the yeah. paper mill industry. Actually, yeah. he really? uh, he left the paper mill industry in order to go public and step wow. forward. Wow. And Jane Mayer at The New Yorker wrote the mm-hmm. expose with him wow. and he spoke nationally about this issue. And just thinking about that is mind blowing. Yeah, and it's really mind blowing. It's, and it's incredible. Yeah. It is. And also physically. Um, we were on the land with him and he Mm -hmm. showed us on camera the waste of where they're dumping Mm -hmm. as workers were actually Mm -hmm. dumping waste. And we show it in the film, just layers and layers, like a stack of pancakes, like he says, Mm -hmm. of just massive amounts of waste. Mm -hmm. And this is right behind Mr. Bowie's home in the film, Simone Mm -hmm. Smith, the nine-year-old. So many hundreds of people live right there and it's being Mm -hmm. dumped in their backyard. That seeps into their groundwater. Mm -hmm. It impacts their drinking water and impacts their air pollution. So Mm -hmm. it's it's they're they're totally trapped in Mm -hmm. um, in this situation here. And and the whistleblower, you know, not only did he risk his life, and he additionally like he also expressed that they don't have to pollute this way, that mm-hmm. there are choices that the company oh, can yeah. make mm-hmm. because he's worked at other Georgia Pacifics mm-hmm. where they do not pollute well, this way, well, that they have modernized technology. So when he first started working in CrossFit, and in his testimony he says this, is I was totally stunned and horrified by their situation, I've never seen dumping like this. And our scientist says it's that of the late 1800s. This kind of waste disposal is so archaic. This plant was established in the late 1800s and they're polluting the same Same way way in 2017. So why is that if we have the technology to, to, to not do that, why are they still continuing to do it? It's an ad- admission of guilt. You okay. know, if, if they were to come forward and to modernize, I think that they would be admitting that they are really mm-hmm. poisoning people mm-hmm. and they are really hurting people. And, you know, I think for them, it's easier for them to hide the problem mm-hmm. than to actually solve the problem. Yeah. And a lot of, right, and, and add, to, add to that as well, uh, a lot of the plants, you know, the owners of these companies, they, it's a cheaper way. Mm-hmm. And so the re- state regulators, because the onus is really on the state regulators of the mm-hmm. EPA, the, the, the EPA's job is to notice control. when they're not yeah. compliant, mm-hmm. right? And watch yeah. the control and yeah. watch the emissions. Yeah. And the e- this local EPA, in this case, it's called Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality. Mm-hmm. They just look the other way and they accept the company's reporting without... Yeah. doing their own independent reporting. Yeah. And I uh, was blown away by what happened because someone from the EPA actually oh, yeah. ended up coming into town. Yeah. And you're showing all of a sudden the fumes were going down. There was less waste. And what yeah. was it, like the week or the two plumes, up prior yeah. to that visit? Yeah. And EPA had left. And all of a sudden it was back, back to, to normal. To normal yeah. Or what they considered normal. I'm like, really? <laughs> That is that's it's a prime happening. example yeah. of the yeah. company hiding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, w- to what Erica said about them spending $4 million on a fence to mm-hmm. keep the people out, to mm-hmm. hide it. And then that was the perfect moment in the film that was really pivotal to yeah. show that the company is hiding everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the whistleblower yeah. even says, we knew. They would get a call. They'd tell us, tell us to clean it up. So they knew when the EPA was coming to town and they knew Ah, when Wilma Subra, our Mm -hmm. chemist on camera, was coming to town. And Mm -hmm. so they would hide it. Mm -hmm. They knew how to lower the emissions. They can operate in a clean way. They just choose not to. Mm -hmm. And so that's the disheartening part, Mm -hmm. I think, not only for us as filmmakers, but for the community who lives there and breathes it every single day. Mm Yeah, and for me, it's like, you know, it's it's cross it. It's just one town where that's happening. How many yeah. other towns yeah. across the United States are f- exposed to that same pollution, that same horrible water quality, that same illness that is going running through these towns where nothing is being regulated or where, you know, they're turning a blind eye. Mm-hmm. Right, and we most recently have seen that. It's a great point, and we mm-hmm. most recently saw that with Flint, Michigan, the Flint, yeah. with the, the lead contamination mm-hmm. in their water supply, and that... 
that is such a prime example and mm-hmm. important to note because just like Cross It in Flint, Michigan, state regulators looked the other way knowing lead was being dumped into this river mm-hmm. and that that river was supplying the drinking water. And just like Cross It, we even show the dismissiveness of the regulators. Mm-hmm. The regulators mm-hmm. admitted of yes. being yeah. to Cross It 20 years ago for a pollution issue. And on the ground, we show in, on Ken Atkins' land a worker where yes. the EPA, mm-hmm. the Deputy of Environmental Protection Agency Region 6, Sam Coleman, picks up the waste and admits, I know this isn't a landfill. I know it's not permitted by the yeah. state. Mm-hmm. And, I'm but, not. <laughs> and I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he drops it. Yeah. He looks ashamed and embarrassed. Yeah. And and this is the man, this is the man that's of the agency that's protecting the people. That's supposed to protect the people. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And, and, yeah, and, and to what 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 I what I also found so mind boggling is like there is no proof that this is done. Like that repetitiveness, like, oh, there's no proof that is really being done. We cannot prove anything, so we cannot yes. step in. Like that yeah. you were getting these comments from yeah. the EPA. Yeah. Right. And we had all the proof. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see our main subject, Mr. Bowie, talking yeah. to Sam Coleman um, mm-hmm. and just inviting him mm-hmm. to, you know, come behind, let's, let's mm-hmm. go on the land. I can show you where all the stuff is. Yeah. And he... You know, you've yeah. seen the film. I don't want to give too much away, but he yeah, basically all, turns a blind eye. Watch it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Edgar, how was it for you being there? Because you shot it over the course of how many years? Six years, five years, or something like that? Yeah. Where yeah, you were going back years. and forth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. On and off, years. yeah. I mean, for me personally, um, like Erica mentioned before, I, I felt the health effects mm-hmm. quite immediately yeah. with the nosebleeds and, you know, the fever and all that stuff. And I see, you know, Mr. Bowie and Mrs. Bowie Mm -hmm. and the community who live with it every day. And it's like, it's just like something that they're used to at this point. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, documenting that and seeing kind of the arc of starting from, you know, no intervention and seeing nobody really caring to getting some people from the EPA and from the Mm -hmm. ADEQ to come down and to actually, you know, investigate quote unquote and I put quotes because it was I think personally I think it was more of a show of face rather than actually trying to get something done down Mm -hmm. there so you know when the EPA sends out you know their deputies to come out to cross it um, I feel like it was more of an act to kind of you know put on a face that we're doing something yeah when in reality it was kind of just to you know, suffice the community so they can just kind of be content with Mm -hmm. having that kind of Mm -hmm. intervention when really nothing was being done. I mean, you see it in the film as well. I mean, Mr. Bowie gets, there's a kind of heated moment Mm -hmm. towards the end of the film where Mr. Bowie and the deputy uh, EPA, uh, deputy of EPA was uh, Sam Coleman were kind of going back and forth. And he was just like, I I know what you're saying, but your actions are different than what you're Mm -hmm. saying. And you kind of got that sense of, and at the end, Coleman was just, you know, mm-hmm. what do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. Was his response. Like, yeah, what do you want yeah. me to do? And and that's something that he should be answering. Right. It's like, you know, it's yeah. he should be, be able to do something about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, for me, it's, it's seeing that arc, but um, just the point of getting people involved on that mm-hmm. level to have, you know, government agencies come down and state agencies come down and recognize the issue. I think that's, um, that's definitely a big step mm-hmm. forward. But with, uh, you know, incidences like Flint, um, a lot of those people, regulators or, you know, government agencies or agents went to jail. I mean, mm-hmm. they got they got into a lot of legal problems. And I think with this community, there is, uh, you know, that's definitely something that, you know, the people would like to see done because this problem has not been solved. So uh, for, for uh, at the end of the day, it's, you know, to have the community be heard is very important Mm -hmm. and to see that you're you know what you're doing is having some sort of effect Mm -hmm. and but this battle is nowhere near done and 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 one what what year was it that the epa came in that the scenes that you shot were they had 2014 2014. 2014. has anything happened ever since since with the epa so there yeah there is so tulane environmental law clinic Mm -hmm. since our filming tulane environmental law clinic filed a civil rights petition Mm -hmm. against the epa Mm -hmm. so the local epa arkansas department of environmental quality okay and um 
are urging investigation by the Civil Rights Office in D.C., mm. which has officially accepted the investigation, Good. which is Good. a Good. which Good. is a big yeah. step. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they claim to be investigating, mm-hmm. but we have not seen any action mm-hmm. on their part. And okay. there's a big difference between claiming to do something mm-hmm. and actually mm-hmm. doing something. Yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> we are weekly monitoring that mm-hmm. and engaged on, with the community mm-hmm. um, from the social action standpoint yeah. and putting the pressure. And we actually have a petition out right now with CARE2. Perfect. It's a civil rights mm-hmm. petition that demands the EPA mm-hmm. investigate Cross It. Mm-hmm. And the reason in, in the civil rights angle is really important and it's also similar to Flint, whereas you know, the community of West Crossett that's predominantly impacted mm-hmm. is um, an African-American community. And so this mm-hmm. petition mm-hmm. that's at the EPA's desk right now states that, you know, this community is disproportionately impacted and needs investigation and relocation. Amazing. And very yeah. similar to Flint, yeah. um, disproportionately low income Mm -hmm. and African-American communities that are Mm -hmm. impacted. Mm -hmm. And that's where this environmental justice awareness and energy comes into play. Mm -hmm. I mean, this cross, it's such a prime example Mm -hmm. of the, the environmental justice aspect the layers of economic justice, human rights, water protection. I mean, the list goes on. So, so there is this, we have about over 30,000 signatures, I believe, right now. Mm-hmm. So is it care, at the EPA's, care.org, it's, it's right? It's care2.org oh, yes. mm-hmm. and, and Cross It Arkansas, okay. and you can go ahead and sign the petition. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, it, it's at the EPA's desk. So okay, so another, another just while we're on the subject of that, the call to action. <laughs> yeah. That's really... It's, yeah, let's give a call to action because I also like to give our viewers a call to action. So what can we do to support you? <laughs> yes. What are we going to do to support Cross It? So, because for me, you know, when I watch this film, I'm like, this is so awesome because it's like, it's illuminating what's really going yeah. on. It's empowering people. And you said something, Edgar, you said, you know, that that, that kind of life has become normal for people mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. they're just accepting what, what you're saying you know that this does that despondency or the fear mm-hmm. where you feel like so frozen you feel like there's nothing you can do about it it's yeah. just like you just continue as much as you can people are accepting the illnesses the diseases the cancers and everything that's going on mm-hmm. and for me like this this film is so symbolic to what can be done to that awakening that grassroots movement where people are taking their power back and saying no we're gonna step up we're gonna illuminate we're gonna bring light to you know corporate greed yeah government corruption as well as you know taking action steps of what needs to be done so how can the rebel hearts community support you besides mm-hmm. everybody going to see the movie and sharing with their friends what <laughs> yeah. else can we do <laughs> yeah well the movie so the rebel hearts community you can come see the film uh it plays december 8th through the 15th at the lemley music hall in mm-hmm. beverly hills so take action by coming to see the film and send your friends <laughs> and send your friends <laughs> and you can also take action right now this very moment um by going to our website well I can tell you but you can also go to our website (laughs) but that what you could do is um, pick up your phone and text uh, the word cleanup no spaces 797979 Mm -hmm. and immediately you'll be prompted to take action right then and there so it's we made it very simple Mm -hmm. to take Mm -hmm. action so text the word cleanup no spaces Seven nine seven nine seven nine. Okay, everybody, you hear that? Go on your phones right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to go a little bit more because we already started tapping onto that. What has happened in CrossFit with the grassroots movement? What are the people doing over there right now since the filming? Since you left over there? Uh, yeah, the, I'm ahead, looking Natalie. at Edgar. <laughs> no, <laughs> because you kept yeah, nodding. I'm yeah. looking at Edgar. Over here. Um, definitely, there's a lot of uh, movement going on. Uh, Mr. Bowie, who is uh, our main subject in the film, has mm-hmm. been doing a lot of hard work on the ground. You know, doing the phone calls, doing the following ups, and doing all that with you know different regulators and with the community of itself. Um, I think at this point, it's kind of a it's 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 at a point where it's you know I, I believe that things are going to change, mm-hmm. and I think with all the work there's really you know no other option but to change, because I think people have reached the point where they they've seen the the light so to speak mm-hmm. of what the possibilities are, um, and I don't think there's 
any stopping the community. Um, and so for us uh, to bring any kind of light to this and, you know, one thing I really wanted to touch on is that, you know, with cases like Flint, Michigan, one of the main reasons why there's a lot of action that took place and people were held accountable and things were actually cleaned up is because it was national news. I mean, it was on, yeah. you know, it was leading the news cycle. It was on the front page of newspapers. And I think with, you know, situations like this, that's really critical. And mm -hmm. a company like Georgia Pacific and, you know, Coke Industries, that's one of their biggest fears. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think once they start seeing people galvanizing and they start seeing people recognizing what's going on and actually doing something about it that's when they start backpedaling and that's mm -hmm. when they start mm -hmm. getting yeah. you taking know action. Yeah. taking yeah. action and yeah. doing something about it mm -hmm. so i think that's one of the most important things and and you know coke industries spends a lot of money on pr every year mm -hmm. they try to you know form themselves as this you know great american company yeah. and serving you know the people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and employing all these people when in reality the last thing they want people to know is you know the kind of stuff that they're doing in cross at arkansas and in other yeah. communities as and, well and you had these yeah, beautiful yeah. angel soft commercials oh, yeah. in your movie <laughs> yeah. we're yeah. taking care of the people whereas you know the opposite is happening so right. you know so people let's get that message out because again for me it's like it's so symbolic I'm, i feel like you know it's it's kind of what what del big tree did with vaxxed mm -hmm. yeah. you know where it's it's created a movement let's create a whole movement because it's like not just one community i think i think this is the starting point for me mm -hmm. you know that's what i'm seeing that's that's manifest Lighting that this the is the starting yeah. point for other communities to step up and and talking about what's happening and demanding the cleanup demanding clean drinking water demanding clean environment because you, you know it's our health it's the health of future generations yes. and it's the health of this planet if we don't have any more clean water to drink what we're going to do right yeah absolutely. absolutely and the demand that you mentioned and that edgar speaks to the pressure mm -hmm. how critical it is in addition to the company, mm -hmm. is, is putting the pressure truly on the government mm -hmm. yeah. and the EPA. And that's mm -hmm. what we're seeing across the country, mm -hmm. be it health care reform, yeah. immigrant rights, mm -hmm. voting rights. It's yeah. the public pressure mm -hmm. that has influenced policy. Yeah. And that is that is like very that is very critical with with cross it and for other mm -hmm. towns mm -hmm. is putting that public pressure on yeah, the government yeah. and those accountable and in the halls of power mm -hmm. and and with that it's the EPA and cross yeah. its case and mm -hmm. right now with with the current administration and our current EPA administrator is Scott Pruitt who is in the pocket of the Koch brothers mm -hmm. and that is no secret yeah. you know the New York Times revealed a, a lot of amazing evidence of their email exchanges. Mm -hmm. and, and Scott Pruitt has sued the EPA mm. more than any other attorney general when he was a, attorney general of Oklahoma. Oh, he sued the EPA okay. 14 times. Wow. And now this is the man who's, in, running our who's protecting yes. the public, who's supposed mm -hmm. to protect the public nationally. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's more urgent than ever. And this yeah. awakening that we're seeing across the mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. and, and what's happening and cross it and this awakening and cross it is just a mirror of what's happening nationally yeah. and that domino effect yeah. mm -hmm. like you were speaking yeah. to and so really speaking truth to power and mm -hmm. make picking up the phone taking action calling in that's yeah. that is how change mm -hmm. is it you know takes place as well as shows like yourself and mm -hmm. and, you. mm -hmm. and pressure through yeah. media yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean the cover like you know for example when the we opened in uh, New York, mm -hmm. we immediately saw that the EPA in DC said that they were going to start making phone calls, mm -hmm. and that was off oh, of massive pressure with mm -hmm. press. Mm -hmm. That is just a micro example mm -hmm. of how positive it is when you just keep speaking out yeah. and putting the pressure yeah. and amplifying yeah. it on shows yeah. like yours and other media. Yeah. And I feel like we're in such a time of change. I feel like kind of what I shared with you before the show, mm -hmm. like in, in the I'm like we're in this a time of awakening of yes. really stepping into other power. And it's not just like one person was going to create the change. It's not like that we can Absolutely. sit and say, hey, the government is taking care of that. Or these people are taking care of that. We're really being asked to start stepping into our power and speaking up and becoming the change we want to see in the world. Because, I mean, that's what this show is about. Let's be the change we want to see in the world. Yeah. So 
giving that responsibility or that power over to other people. Mm -hmm. right. So I love, you know, that message. And what I want to see is how has making that move, and I, I'd love to get all three of you to, to speak on that, how has making this movie affected your own life? How has it affected you personally? Mm. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Oh, you, do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, personally, it's it's definitely changed a lot. Um, first of all, it's made me more knowledgeable on just, you know, the environmental uh, affairs of, you know, our country and, and the hierarchy and the structure of all that stuff. But also, I mean, it's affected me in a way where I've kind of gained a second family, um, mm. obviously with, you know, Eric and Natalie, but also with the community down there. Mm -hmm. um, I still speak with... Uh, Mrs. Bowie, who's, you know, one of our subjects in the film. Yeah. And she texts me and, you know, she texts me about Cheryl. my baby and, you know, and all <laughs> oh, this stuff. So sweet. And, you know, same with Cheryl Slavant mm -hmm. and Mr. Bowie and all that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's really uh, made it, you know, made it, made a strong impact on me to be able to, you know, understand what people are going through, not just reading it in a paper, but actually mm -hmm. being down there and, you know, and conversing with them and, and being able to, you know, form a bond like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's kind of personal because these are my friends and family who are living down there and they're, mm -hmm. you know, in this situation. So it's, it, it, it makes me pretty mad and it's, it's very personal for me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's beautiful. Erica. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you, guys. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel the same way. I think we all feel the same way. You know, starting this film, you know, all of us had the same intent was to help this community and to make an impact. And mm. little did I know how much they were going to impact me. Mm. And so, you know, being away from CrossFit, we still talk to Mrs. Bowie when well, she texted me yesterday. Mr. <laughs> Bowie, Cheryl, they're yeah. still our family. Mm -hmm. You know, we gained mm -hmm. such an amazing family in Arkansas. And every time we go there, every time we talk to them, they're such positive, loving, kind, giving people. And they don't have a lot. Mm -hmm. And so it just it opened my eyes to a whole other world. And it just brought me so much closer to mm -hmm. these people who you know, have gone through a lot and it's just changed my whole life. I, I and I feel so grateful mm -hmm. and so thankful because a lot of people don't get that chance in life yeah. to work on something, not only as a job, but also as something that will not only professionally important, but personally impactful. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a friends and family for mm -hmm. life and knowing that I can always pick up the phone and talk to Mr. Bowie or go to Cross It and visit the family. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's changed my whole world and I see things differently and it's just been an amazing journey, a very emotional journey, mm -hmm. but the most fulfilling, so. That's so beautiful, thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Just if you're yeah. fashion, I mean, think all, take a breath you know, yeah. it's just, it's enough for yeah. all of us together too as family mm -hmm. you know to come together and have this special moment together mm -hmm. you'll never have with anyone else you know yeah and yeah. it's just the yeah. most amazing yeah. feeling and i feel like that's when you know you're on your path right? yeah yeah when you're just like walking what to, what you're supposed to do finding your mission yeah yeah absolutely so oh, amazing yeah natalie yeah. What about you? <laughs> Gushing. <laughs> oh, you did a moment. <laughs> so good. Um, oh, yeah. Wow. I'm feeling very emotional at <laughs> this moment. <laughs> that was really beautiful, Erica. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel the same. I mean, I feel very similar to what Erica and Edgar expressed. Um, this, I mean, this experience has been sacred and Mm -hmm. profound personally uh, for me as well um, you know I s before I met them I was working on social justice documentaries for a while mm -hmm. and felt that that was my calling mm -hmm. in a way and 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 meeting the buoys and intimately having them in my life and becoming their friends and family and Cheryl, mm. like my grandmother, I felt, I feel like a grandmother and, um, you know, I call them when I need, like for when I need advice. <laughs> it's, it's, it's become so much more than a oh film God. and a social yeah. action campaign. I mean, they, they've, you know, witnessing what they're fighting for. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the kindest people on the planet I, yeah. I've ever met and have a generous spirit about them. And when you mm -hmm. meet them, you feel like you know them. Yeah. And uh, I felt like that in instantly with them. And 
And I, you know, witnessing um, their their ability to turn such a a really hard situation, an mm -hmm. arduous, difficult thing, right, mm -hmm. into such beauty and positivity mm -hmm. and to rise above yeah. is something that is like the biggest lesson of my Amazing. life, uh, of that kind of reflection of what witnessing them yeah. and witnessing their commitment to humanity and to themselves and honoring that. And that has been really a profound, I, I think of them as my teachers, actually. Mm -hmm. I in a really huge way um mm. in addition to family and friends they're just it's been incredibly transformational mm. and our partnership it was really beautiful to make it happen oh. and also with act four yeah. and their partnership and making yeah. this happen act Four entertainment that was really amazing so and all of us having that same mission mm -hmm. you know of you know, with Act 4 and, and the American Independent Institute, just all of us kind of coming together yeah. as a team, as a family with the same goal in mind. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. You know, yeah, all walks of life, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that intention from the beginning yeah. mm -hmm. authentically was, it is to create change mm -hmm. at, and cross it and to mm -hmm. clean it up. And so it's been beautifully transformative for all of us collectively yeah. and the town to witness our work simultaneously lift up the community yeah. and to yeah. elevate that visibility mm -hmm. and to witness that as it's happening in real time mm -hmm. together. And that's how movements happen. That's how mm -hmm. change happens. It's not with one voice or one person. Yeah. It's with a collective awareness and mm -hmm. movement. So mm -hmm. that's been our, our intention. Oh, I think I need to take a breath over here. That was so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I think that's, you know, that's you're so right. Up. We have to come together. We yeah. cannot do this alone. Yeah. You know, we have to find our soul tribe, which yes. you know, I yes. totally yes. see. That's what you did. Mm. Not just the three of you, but even the people over there. Yeah, yeah. And for me, just what touches me so much is how, like, and, and in a way, I feel like you brought the light to the town. Yeah, mm, for yeah. you went in, and with you, for by you showing up for them, you taught them that they can now show up for themselves as well. Mm. And so that is beautiful. Just beautiful. so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, this thank you beautiful. so much. <laughs> so we have a few more minutes left to share with us. What is next? Oh. What Can we talk next? about the theater release yeah, and the opening yeah. night? Yeah, we'll talk about the theater We're release. We're going to shift from a really emotional, <laughs> yeah. really emotional state. Let's finish with a celebration <laughs> yes. of the opening of this movie. Share yes. with us. So we're very honored and excited for opening night. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a really s two special guests opening night so on fast. December 8th. <laughs> Uh, opening night at the Lemley Music Hall in Beverly Hills. Mindy Jones, mm -hmm. who wrote the theme this song for the film Run Down to the River. Mm -hmm. um, and she's Moby's lead singer and Moby who produced the mm -hmm. song. Um, they will be performing live on Amazing. December 8th. Yeah. Amazing. And so we're thrilled and honored and excited for that event. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that you all come out and, and visit and hang with us. And there's going to be a Q&A afterwards. Awesome. Yeah, so it'll be great. Awesome. And we're playing for one week, um, December 8th through the yeah. 15th. Awesome. And for anybody who's not in Los Angeles, how can they see the film? Is there a, a DVD release that's planned already or scheduled already or just like, you know, sign up for the newsletter? What is the best way to find out yeah. about that? Sign up for our yes. newsletter would be the best direct way to, to stay in mm -hmm. contact with us and on the home page. Mm -hmm. Put your email in there and we do monthly newsletters mm -hmm. to keep in connection or biweekly. Yeah. We try to do biweekly. <laughs> <laughs> to stay in connection with the community. And we're going to be start doing like a lot of blasts yeah. to be announcing um, yeah. the opening week in, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And th that's one way in addition to. And we are, are, we are planning an iTunes release and a DVD release. Okay next year and so that's sort of mm -hmm. on the way mm -hmm. uh, which we're really excited about and for yeah. people to have access to this film and to take action and yes you know, we all feel like this is a campaign. It's it not is. a film. We're not done with it and it's mm -hmm. over. This is mm -hmm. the rest of our, you know, yeah. lives and I think yeah. this is our mission yeah. to continue the work and to continue mm -hmm. to make change mm -hmm. and to help the community cross yeah. it and all 
you know, towns across the country mm-hmm. who are experiencing mm-hmm. corporate greed yeah. and pollution yeah. and who are suffering. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And then and also to that right now to take action, you can text just to reiterate that as well, because yeah. we do have that exciting social action yes. component <laughs> going on right now. Um, text the word clean up to seven nine seven nine seven nine and you'll be immediately prompted mm-hmm. in to take action. Mm-hmm. As, as well as our uh, website, www.companytownfilm. Dot com has all the information that you can awesome. find. Yes, awesome. Yes. I was at Del at this at the Los Angeles premiere of Vaxxed mm-hmm. last year, year and a half ago, and Dell said something. He's like, "I don't want this to be an underground movement. I don't want this to be a documentary. I want this to be a global movement. Mm-hmm. And I would like to set that same attention for Aww. your film that this is not just going to be a documentary or a global action, yeah. but this is going to go national." that as many people as possible are hearing about that story, yeah. that other communities are becoming inspired by your actions and by the community of CrossFit's actions, and that people are realizing how much power we actually do, do have. We do. That we don't just have to be a victim of circumstance, that we don't just have to take what is being done to us, and that everybody has the courage that the people of CrossFit have mm. to start speaking up and creating change because, you know, people, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible when we come together and you are showing us that. So that is my intention for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful intention. Thank and you. CrossFit showing us this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so with that, we're going to wrap up over here. It was, oh my gosh, that was such an amazing gift to have all three of you on the show. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you so much. Thank so you, much for Erica. having us. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for the work that you yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's platforms amazing. like this that make it possible for us to, you know, share it with thank people. You. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Rebel Hearts, I hope you're as touched, as inspired as I am after this interview. And as you know, go over to christyreeves.com and sign up for our newsletter so you can stay tuned for our upcoming shows and the replays that we're mm-hmm. doing. And what I actually would like you to do, this, the, this episode's going to be up on YouTube, maybe you're even watching it on YouTube, or maybe listening to the iTunes Heart Radio, but go over to YouTube and leave us a comment and let us know what action you are taking today to create change. Maybe it is signing the petition, sharing it with your friends, Come on board, join our family over here, and let's create change together. And also, we would love for you to hop over to iTunes, leave us a five-star rating and review, because that is also helping us to get people to pay attention to the show. And you know, I, you know, like I want this to be a show that you are listening to and becoming inspired to step into your power and be the change that you want to see in the world. Okay, Rebel Hearts, that's it for today. We'll see you next Wednesday. We're going to talk about women in film next week. We'll have some representatives from that organization on our show. And until then, go be your amazing, inspired, beautiful selves and remember to rebel on. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com.